This is Tyler Lewis here with Phenon Hoop Report here on the Coach's Corner. We have a very special guest today, Trevor West. It's great to have you today. Hey, how you doing? Good, great to be here. So a little bit about Trevor. Trevor took over Gardner Road, and now he's the director um, of the Bulldogs. So Trevor has been a great mentor to so many athletes. Um, he's helped a numerous amount of players in the Hoop State and all around the country, the world. And just a little bit of background on Trevor from his playing career. Um, he was a four-year starter at Averett University, where he scored over 1,000 points and um, led him to a conference championship. So you want to tell me a little bit about your background playing and just a little bit about growing up in the Gardner Road family? Uh, yeah. So my first, my first experience with basketball is a little, you know, like everybody, a little rec league. Um, little junior Hornets rec league. Um, from there, I quickly transitioned to Garner Road. My dad took it over. Well, started making those strides to take it over. Like he was identified, and you know, like like you're gonna take it over in a few years. That that had happened. So we had switched over towards Garner Road. Um, I want to say I was like five or six. So I like I'm on year 22 right now of Garner Road, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, but yeah, playing wise, you know, I went to I went to Eastway High School, and I transferred to News Christian, played my four years there. Um, I went to Avery University, like you said. Um, but after my four years at Avery, I just stopped playing. I haven't I, I transitioned to the other side of the basketball more so coaching and uh, development wise. Did you ever ha um did you ever want to go play professional overseas or anything or um expand your playing career? Did you always know you wanted to um get into coaching and training and that side? See, see that that was the that was the tear for me because um you know as I finished and like even now people are still trying to get me to play so um but I love coaching I love the, I love what I'm what I'm doing but then I think my competitive piece of me is starting to come back like I'm starting to want to go play and I'm playing pickup and three on three and stuff like that so I mean know. that was, that that was definitely the hardest part for me was I mean you grew up playing since you were three four years old and. Like it's the hardest thing just to to have that ball quit bouncing in a way. I know we're um, in the game of basketball in a different way, but just playing the game of basketball, you know, there's something special about it. And do you ever see yourself? I know you said you're playing pickup. Like people are still asking you to go play. Like it's the right opportunity came about. Would you ever give it give that a chance? Yeah, if if you would, I would. Yeah, hey, I see we, we, that. <laughs> I'm, putting, I'm putting it on you now. <laughs> we, can no, team, I, we, can, we can team up a little bit. Well, have, a, be, have a nice little backcourt somewhere. Yeah, that would be a hell of a backcourt. But where, where are we going? All, all we need is a city. All, team. We need, all we need is a city, right? And, and, and yeah. you guys to believe in us. Yep, that's it. That's, that's all that matters right there. So yeah. tell, tell me a little bit um, about how – I know you told me you've been in the Gardner Road family since, what, six years old. Tell me how Gardner Road has really impacted your life from not only the playing side but now from the coaching side of things. Um, you know, just, just like uh, bigger, bigger than Gardner Road, just basketball-wise, um, I find myself relating back, back to, like, basketball stuff all the time. Like, um, you know how you, you do something or you don't do something, you get mad at yourself? And then, like, the first thing you think about is something that somebody might say something to you before that you can apply to it. Like, uh, your coach ever say, do your work early, right? And then you you wait long, and then you're rushing to do something, you're sweating because, like, you got people at the door. And, and it's like I'm starting to make those connections that my coach was talking about that I thought maybe he was only talking about on the court. But really, it's, it's, all, it's more so off the court. You know, the sense, sense of urgency and um, – being able to compete off the court for what you for the for the things you want or you need and stuff like that, um, so basketball has has been a tremendous teacher in my life. That's awesome. So tell me a little bit. I know we we just talked about how Garden Road put an impact in your life. Um, what makes Garden Road so special? Why every year Garden Road has one of the best AAU teams, travel ball teams on the circuit. Um. You know, I, I, I equate that to a few things. Um, could we like what we were just talking about, the length of, of time. Um, like how many AAU programs do you know has been going on for 30 years? Yeah, so so for me, it was just like the the, the tenure, the length of time that Garner Road has been going on. Um, I, I also think that the amount of kids that we put in college each year is pretty remarkable. Like since the, over the last 10 or 15 years, you know, to, to put uh, anywhere from 11 to 13 kids in college 
um, each year. Uh, I think I think what separates us, because uh, I, I is you ever seen that you ever seen that that video with Dave when he's talking about work after championship after the championship. Yep. That's that's what we are. That's that, that's like what we embody. You know, like if you come by Garner Road, which I'm sure you will, because you'd be closer now. Um, you'll you'll see, like it's like a factory in there, man. You know, like we'll have, so we have we have 12 goals in Garner Road, and you, and you know that, and we'll have at one point in time we'll have either one or two kids at each goal working on their own, you know, their skill development or whatever they're working on that day, and it just, it's it's kind of. I don't know, man. You just walk in the gym, you just start smiling. You see all you hear all those the balls bouncing and, and shoes squeaking and kids working and you know, got like a little bit of music playing. I, I think that's where we separate ourselves. So talk about a little bit about uh, I know you mentioned about the players, like eleven to thirteen players every year going division mm-hmm. one or playing collegiate basketball, division two, II, division three. I mean that that just shows you the type of program that you guys have. And I think it starts from you guys at the top, not only being great teachers or great um, players like you were, I think it goes back to just being a great person as like the whole, like your whole family is. So tell us a little bit about like the players that y'all get. Like, I mean, they aren't going out there getting knuckleheads. You're able to go out there and get good quality kids and kind of grow them um, along. So tell me a little bit about how y'all grow each individual player. Um. I, I think that I think that uh, it, it's special because each player we're not necessarily making the player for the team to be good. And I think that's where a lot of kids, a lot of coaches get in trouble. Um, you know, they get caught up in being the number one fifth grade team. Like, like you played at Utah. Who, who was yep. the number one? Who was who? Who was the number one team in the country our eleventh grade year? Our last year. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I couldn't tell you. <laughs> you know, but but I know you went to state, and I know you went to Butler. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. It's it's. I think we get. I think people get confused about the things that are really important. Um. And I think that that's what end up hurting hurting those kids. And I think that's what we try to stay away from. And if I so if I if we see a kid and this kid is, um, you know, he's five eleven and he's playing center. He's probably not going to be playing center if he's five eleven and thirteen at seven. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And they'll they'll allow that kid to be really good at center for the next two years, and then up until he gets too small, and it's just like. But what we'll try to do is we'll try to push those kids, develop those kids, to give them the best chance to play at uh, college uh, college basketball. That's so, awesome. That's I mean, that's a good way. That's a good way to look at it because I mean, obviously, you're not out there for the wins. And I mean, you you want to win every time, but you're not. It sounds like you're not out there for the wins and losses. You're more out there for helping these kids reach their dreams and helping them get a scholarship where they don't have to pay for school and they, they can use that those years of Garden Road and they're setting them up for four years of college, which sets them up for the next forty years of their life. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and that that that's, that's what it's. I mean, that's why I really respect. Y'all's program really respect you and just y'all are really out there just to help the player um, reach their dream instead of putting your individual goals. I mean, you're putting their individual goals above yours when it, when it gets to that point. So um, we're both in very unique situations. Um, I know you took over Gardner road for your dad. Um, Mm -hmm. I just now started working for my dad so I want to know what did your what has your dad meant to you during the whole process and growing up and teaching you probably everything you know a little bit. Uh, man, he's just been like you know just like that anchor, that backbone guy for you. Um, like he he just he just uh, you know he's he's taught me a lot. Um, he's always he's always he's always been around on the basketball court, always teaching me things. Uh, it's. It's, it's, it's all because me and my father's di- 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 dynamic is weird. It's more so like a friendship, um, more than anything. But it's it's like it's one, it's one of those things you got to kind of be around and you know it. You I mean you've seen it, you felt it. So it's, <laughs> it's it's just special, man. He he um he helps me tremendously. Like we talk every day. Um, we talk about the weirdest stuff, random stuff. Like he called me last night at one a.m. You know, I don't think my 56 year old father be calling me at 1 a.m. But like, just just to show just to show you, like that's the kind of relationship we have. Um, uh, 
I, I think I think he has taught me I don't want to say weird things, but things you traditionally would not learn. Yep. So he so he has taught me like one of so one of the things that's ringing in my mind right now is he's I remember him telling me sometimes you can learn what not to do from somebody. Yeah. And like I, I never you know have you ever really thought about that before? Learn what not to do from you somebody. You know what? Like that's that's sometimes your greatest like learning tool is like you see something that somebody's not doing something the right way and you're like man i'm not gonna do that like you learn what not to do and it helps you out in the long term because yeah. you know you're not gonna act a fool or you're not gonna say something you're not supposed to say or you know you just know how to act because you've seen him acting up and that's how you learn yep for sure for sure and, and that, that's that's why it's been like it's it's kind of hard to talk about because there's a lot of examples and it's a lot of you know just like uh it's it just it's just like a feel, man. It's it's, it's, it's weird, man. Like I, I don't like to put I, I wouldn't even like to put words on it, you know, because um, yeah. it's just like a special relationship. Uh, that's, that's that's really special. Um, so obviously, I had I had a question for you. Like, what one thing that he really taught you? Sort of answered that of kind of learning what not to do in a way. But I'm, I'm oh, gonna oh. Uh, I, I could I could tell you this. Um, he also he also kind he also taught me you know to to, to I don't want to say not be the smartest guy in the room but you know don't always you know kind of figure out how the room is going first you know to uh to like cause, you know everybody had their opinions right yep and instead of walking in because that's how I am like you know I, I walk I'm walking in like this is how this is what I believe this is what I say that's how I am um, he has really helped me and taught me to kind of you know, bear me down, bring me down. Cause you know, you know how it is being a point guard. I got to yep. be at you, man. <laughs> you, you got you to know when to speak up and when to be quiet. And sometimes, you know, the right thing to do is just be quiet in a room full of people who are loud because, you know, some, some of the loudest people are some of the people that just want their voices heard and they may not be right or wrong. So right, it's good. Right. So, all right. So any pointers for me, I'm going, my brother's already with Phenom. My dad actually, the owner of it and CEO and he's had such a wonderful business so far. Any pointers for me working with my family? Um, I would say be patient, <laughs> uh, get dinner. You know, so I could talk all the time. Um, but you know, other than that, man, like I don't, I don't cause you know, I work with my uncle and, and, and my dad. So are, are, are around going to So it's like, it's it's not it's more so a blessing than a curse. Um, the few times you find out it's a curse, it's really a curse. But other than that, man, it's it's super special. It's super fun. Um, uh, it's a it's a different level of trust. Uh, I definitely could tell you that uh, working with family. But other other than that, man, I would just say be patient. Don't let Kobe get under your skin. I know <laughs> I know how brothers get, man. Are y'all are y'all pretty good? Are y'all are y'all uh? How, how do y'all get? We're good. We're we're really good. I, I I'm I'm sure I'd be the one getting underneath his skin. He's the one that's <laughs> super organized, and I'm sure of go with the flow type person. So I'm sure, oh, oh, I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure I'm gonna make him mad a couple of times not having my stuff together right the way he wants it. But um, is, is we'll, we'll work it out. out. We'll definitely work it out for sure. I'm about to say that that's why you lit up when I said that. Huh? That that was that uh, little brother lit up like. That's right. Y'all don't know that I'm the one that get on his nerves. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So a little bit. Of what? Um. How is how has coaching been different than playing? And if you were coaching your teenage self, how would you coach yourself? Uh, I would say just the, the coaching differs by um the competitive edge. You know, having to dial back um the competitive edge and still be able to deliver that message to the kid to the players. Not, not necessarily like how I would talk to TJ or Terry or, but like, I got to talk to them like a 16 or 17 year old, you know, that that's, I don't want to say that's fragile, but you know, I could mess with their psyche if, if it's not said correctly. I think that's the biggest um, difference that I've noticed. Um, just like just growing up and just, just seeing like what your words can really do to people, you know, while you're playing, Hey man, what, what? You know, you're not really thinking about it. You're just competing, and you just got to get on them real quick and move on. But uh, you know, at at this 
at this age, 16, 15, 16, 17, or even, um, cause I coach completely different when I'm nine and under, like I don't even, I don't even get mad at nine and under. I'm like, man, just keep, just be aggressive, shoot it, <laughs> just dribble, do it, do it. Like, just show me what you can do, you know, cause it's about development at that age. But as we get older, that's definitely a difference for me. It's a competitive edge and dialing back my, um, Aggression, I, I guess I would say. Uh, but but the what was the other side of that question? Was the oh my teenage self? That's why I forgot that. Ooh. <laughs> um. If I was coaching my teenage self, uh, I, I would I would probably focus on the work. To be honest, because um, you know. Like, I feel like all of this training information, all this stuff is new. Um, I felt like a lot of us relied on talent. Um, so, so like, I, that's what I would, because I, I just know myself and I, I, would, I know I didn't work how I should have growing up. So that, that would be my message to myself would be like, make sure you're working. Um, but, you know, other than that, I wouldn't even want to coach myself, to be honest. Like I know I'm crazy, man. I don't want to. I don't have. I would have to have to deal with Trevor, man. <laughs> I mean, you would have been fine. You would have known how to handle yourself as good as anyone. You probably had a little arguments here and there back. Well, we would have been yourself. fighting every day or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do that. Hey, I do that already. With, with, <laughs> I'm just in my own brain. But my uh, your mind's playing tricks on you, huh? Yeah, man. Is this? You know these these days get long, especially uh you know these these uh these teenagers that are fun most days. I think I think I think people are lying if they say that that, that you know kids never get under their skin. <laughs> yeah. Because some days, man, you know I think that uh, but you but you still gotta love them, but the the love never it, changes. But they can they can get they can yeah. get under your skin. Kids know what they're doing, man. That's what they're good at. Yeah, they there. <laughs> they, they are. You're right. So, um, what's in your opinion? Which been your favorite team to coach or play on, and why? Um, it, can be, it can be your college. It can be outside of Garden Road. It can be uh, high school. Man, I, I know this is gonna. Everybody already know them. Gonna say my 2012 team, man. Uh, but but I just want to talk more in depth on it because I don't think people really realize what was going on like in that in that chain that link, um, you know like I think back up on it, and man like we would have died on that court for each other man and um, I think because it was my first team I didn't realize how special it was until I moved on and then you start seeing the selfishness and you know people look look people off and um, just like you know all that weird stuff that goes on in basketball man, um, but. Like, yeah, man, like, I haven't had a team that's been, like, gone to road 2012 where I feel like all 12 links in that chain are pulling to win that game. Like, it is no other – there's no offshoots. There's no side streets. There's just that one lane on that highway going full speed ahead trying to win that game. So tell us a little bit about, like, the 2012 team, who was on it, um, who was the leaders and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, obviously, our leader – well – our leaders, our leaders in, in the categories was TJ Warren. Um, uh, I talk lead, leading the team. Um, I would say, oh, Ray Sean King. Um, Ray Ray Sean King, the super special guy, man. Like, um, like I said, I, I like within it. I didn't realize how special the group was or the kids were in it. Um, but you know, Ray had been diagnosed with leukemia, fifteen and under a year. Um, and also Ray was Ray was a five ten center. Um, he died off leukemia fifteen under a year, missed sixteen. Tyler, he was back seventeen and under to play AAU at center at five ten. That's great. And and, and and dominated. Like you, you know, I like and it's and you know, that's that was always just Ray for me. And now I'm thinking back on it. And like Ray, Ray made us tough. He wouldn't allow us to get to you know how your team gets to that point, you're about to check out the game. Man, Ray will start blanking. Man, no, nah, we we not no 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 man, we are gonna fight. We gonna mm-hmm. and um he kind of and you know I still talk to him about this today. I think that he molded because he 
was a uh, he was an older kid. He was a reclass kid. I get on him about that too. But he kind of like he was the big brother for all like eleven of us, man. He kind of pushed us in that that tough direction. To be honest with you, um, so I would say that that was Ray was our leader. That's that's awesome, especially the story of missing the year and leukemia and coming back and being able to fight and be on that court. I mean, that's truly special. Um, talk about TJ a little bit. I mean, obviously, I had the privilege to grow up with you guys, play two years with him at State. And um, just how much of a bucket was he even back then? Like, people was – I mean, honestly, he was so underrated too. Like, obviously, he was rated high, but people really never respected him because it just looked so easy to him, I felt like. Like, he'd go out there and he'd have 30 points and it felt like he came out of there with 14 or something. It just – because it was so easy. Like, you never knew about – like. I mean, you end up at stat lines, wow, TJ another. I mean, it happened in college. Like, man, well, TJ had another 28-point game. Like, it's yeah. easy. And then now to see him have that success in the bubble this year, like everybody's starting to finally put some respect on his name, which they should. Yeah, uh, uh, man, I would say, you know, growing up with TJ is, is like, uh, like, I mean, I, I felt – I felt – this level, like I, I knew he was gonna be a pro at an early age. Uh, like you know, you just because he, you know, he came, he lived with me, and we we always around each other. We're always at Terry House, so you know, just just being a guard and what was at the time what looked like a big man to me. Um, and he was you know handling the ball and between his legs, crossovers and all that stuff. And you know, you kind of like you sitting there thinking you're 11, 12 years old, and you're like, okay, this guy is pretty good. And then, you know, you start, you start playing, you get to 14, 15, start thinking back again. It's like, I never seen, have I ever seen this guy score on the 20? Like, and I remember those thoughts. Like I started sizing TJ up, like, like, I, you know, you start asking yourself, like, man, have I, have anybody ever stopped TJ? Have, has TJ ever had a bad game? I started thinking about that after a few years. And then I kept looking at it and all the way up to 17, I have never seen TJ score less than 20 throughout that AAU experience. Like from, 10 or 11 up, he averaged 20 points per game. And, I, and I've been looking for it, Tyler. Like, I'm, I was looking for it. Like, uh, he had one game, he had 20 points. It was against Ishmael Wainwright. And as soon as he walked off the court, this, 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 is what, this is how weird it was to me, Tyler. As soon as he walked off the court, I was like, yo, I think you had 19 that game. And he was like, he was like what are you talking about? And we went and checked the stats, but he had 20. So basically, I, I couldn't get – I didn't find a game where he had less than 20. But, you know, like, TJ was super special, man. Um, it was almost surreal watching him. Um, he's the only player that I, like, will truly – like, I don't want to say submit to, but, like, here, TJ, take the ball, TJ. I'm going to go stand on this side. <laughs> you know, like, he's the only player that gives me that feel that I play with. And, and, and he made our job extremely easy. Out on the court. Oh, they're going to assist? Easy. <laughs> so, and, and he's just one of those guys, man. He, like, he made you feel special. He cared about you. And he's one of those dudes that, even though he's ACC Player of the Year, my sophomore year, like, I mean, he always wanted the team to – I mean, his main goal was get to the NCAA tournament that year. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, we, we struggled a little bit during the middle of the season. I mean, we are on the bubble. We played the first four game that year. And, obviously, TJ was the main reason – we got to the NCAA tournament. So, I mean, he's an extremely special player and person. So, would you say he, he is probably the best player to come through Gardner Road program? Um, I mean, I, I, you, get, you get into – because are, are we talking about John? Because John went one. But – I mean, it's your opinion. You, you can talk- answer how you want to answer. Now, I'm going with T-Day, bro. <laughs> That's what I that, like. That's just what I feel. You know, like, man, that's that's a tough check for I think for anybody. Um, and and even you know, John mad at me, man. Y'all play one on one. You deal with him. <laughs> like that, that's just what it is. Uh, but I I, I would have to go T Day. I, I, I yeah T J for sure. So who? All right, answer this question. In the next ten years, who is one person that you think from like the Garden Road program? that could be a so-called T.J. Warren or John? Um, let me think. Uh, we we got a it's, – it's a couple of kids that, that I'm, I'm eyeing in, in the program that I, I think 
could potentially get there. Um, see, my my whole thing with that though is me putting the pressure on them and them here. Yeah, you, you, you don't have to answer it. It's all good. Changing yeah. their changing their minds. Um, but but I think that I think we can talk about the twenty one group. I think they're the closest to it. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, talk about the twenty one group. Um, people people aren't gonna like what I say, but I, I think that Will Felton is going to be a pro man. Like the way that he's backflipped. Um, and obviously there's other pros on the team. Those are the like Lucas and DeMarco. Those are, those are the no brainers, right? Because, you know, 80, uh, DeMarco has already got one check on the resume with the 80 something in the, in the um, country. And then Luke is going to be in the ACC as well. So at six, eight guard. So he, he's probably going to make some money. Um, but I think that the sleeper, I think, well, I think there's two sleepers on that team. It's Will Felton and, uh, and Jordan Wiley. This the six ten. Um, I think he can be a three, but he doesn't work on his like he doesn't work on his legs like he should, his body like he should. But I think once he gets to college, um, he's going to Iona too, Rick Pitino. So yeah. I'm really interested to see how that goes. But uh, yeah, I, I would say I would say those four. Um, man, because that team was super talented. They they, they just couldn't come together. Um, yeah, but it was super talented team. Um, Cause I don't, I don't even want to count nobody out, man. Because I'm the kind of person, you know. I say it to the kids, um, with work, anything is possible, man. As long as you're working hard and doing the right things, and every day you're getting better, why can't you be a pro? Yeah, you know. And I mean, I definitely agree with you. Um, well, I think Will's a tremendous talent. I mean, he's a walking double double every time he steps on the court. Every time I seen him play, um, uh, I remember him coming to when I was at Elon. I think my, our first summer we had an elite camp and he came to elite camp and he was, he was really good there and um, continue to keep it. And he just continued to keep growing and not, not growing into his body, but just growing on the court, being a better basketball player. Um, Cause he's a great kid. So you never had to question that about him or his family is, I mean, man, he just continued to keep growing, which was awesome to see. Um, I know you mentioned that 2012 team, but I know that 2012 team took a major loss in um, the Bob Gibbons tournament one year. Uh, 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 a, team, a, team, a team called Team Loaded, and um, I think TJ Warren probably had 44 that game, but um, uh, somebody else had 47. So <laughs> um, Three points shy of Mike Miller's all-time record. I will never forget that announcement. I will, I will never forget that announcement or that game, man. I remember sitting there watching it. You was torching us. Um, I think you had about 25 when Wes subbed me in. And he was like, pick him up full. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, he has 25 right now. You want me to stop him? How? <laughs> <laughs> like, and that, that was what? I think you had like 20-something in the first, like, eight or nine minutes, right? Because you were going off. I think somebody <laughs> had said something about you or – it might have been about your mom or something, man, because the way he was going off, you took that joint person. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it was a great game, man. It was super exciting. Frank Mason had 20-something. Andrew White had 20-something. Terry had 20-something. Yeah, it was, it, it, was a high, it was a high-scoring game, and it was a good game. And a lot of people don't understand that, honestly, we probably played our best game that – against you guys, and we turned around and lost the next game and was out of the Bob Gibbons and, that night. Yeah, I, I mean it was, but that was a hell of a game, though, man. <laughs> like that—that that was that was the championship game. That was, it that was, was the like that, 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 that's the and I was so surprised that they put us in the same pool because I mean that's 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 the game that we were all looking forward to the whole time was yeah. just playing yeah, against I, you guys. Yeah, but but we know that won't happen at Phenom. I know y'all are gonna uh, y'all gonna put put us on the right side of the of the bracket, so. So things look pretty in the championship. Sounds good. As long as, long as we have Gardner Road at the events, I, I, I'll make sure I make sure to uh, have the pools right and have the two best teams in the championship. Yes, sir. Looking forward to it. Sounds good, man. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time, Trevor West here on the Coach's Corner. Um, it's a privilege having you, man. All right, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. Sounds good. Thanks. Uh huh.